Hi, everybody. Welcome to Driftless Knitting, my podcast all about knitting and spinning and fibery goodness. Um, this is episode number 33, I think. Um, I'm coming to you from southeastern Minnesota. Uh, my name is Jennifer, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Um, and today is a very hot and sticky Sunday. Um, I am not in my usual place of recording. As you can see, I am sitting on the floor. Um, this is the floor of my living room, and I'm sitting right by my um, sliding deck door right here, um, trying to catch a breeze because it is very warm today. It's been warm, super warm the last couple of days. Um, yesterday was even worse. It was like 90, like three degrees Fahrenheit. Um, by the end of the day, and oh my gosh, I was just dying yesterday. I came home from work, and we don't have um, central air conditioning in this apartment. We have a window unit. Not really a window unit. It's like, now you can kind of see the corner of it, like right there. It's stuck, like, in the wall. But it's only in the main living area, and it doesn't have, like, a thermostat on it. So if you turn it on, it will just run continuously, and it won't shut off when it gets to a certain temperature or when it's cooled down a certain amount. So we just we just don't run it um, unless we're here and unless it gets really bad. So I got home yesterday, and I opened all the windows and the door here and turned on all the fans, and... It just wasn't cooling down. It was like 89 degrees inside my apartment. Oh my gosh. It was so hot. So I caved. I caved and I closed everything up. And I turned the air on. And I got it down to about 79 degrees in here. Which compared to 89 felt like heaven. So, But then I had to shut it off when I went to bed. Because it will just keep running all night. So yeah, it got... It got warm again in here um, throughout the night, but um, yeah, and today it's only about 81 outside, but the humidity, uh, the heat index is supposed to make it feel a few degrees warmer, and I'm looking at my thermostat in my house. It's 83 in my apartment, so yeah, and I'm still, I'm crazy. I'm still drinking coffee. Because I can't live without it. But I did let it cool down to like room temperature. I cannot drink hot, hot coffee. But I don't like iced coffee. It's so weird. I don't like cold coffee. But I can't drink hot coffee in the summer. So I have to like have it be like room temperature. <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah. So we're just, you know, getting through. Surviving. It's summertime. It's the Midwest. We have such drastic fluctuations in weather. It's just so crazy. Um, yeah, it's weird to think that, you know, wintertime we're below zero Fahrenheit, and then in the summertime we're, we can get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, that's just the way it goes, I guess. Um, yeah, so today's episode is going to be kind of short, I, I think, um, unless I start going on a rant about something, I don't know, um, and I don't really have too much to show you, unfortunately. I have been knitting um, a bit. This week has been kind of crazy. There's been a lot of um, get-togethers with friends, and um, Seaver was up for a night. He's been at the farm most, like, almost full-time now uh, that school is done and working with his dad, so he, but he was up for a night. We had, like, kind of a date night, um, which was really great. Went uh, to downtown lacrosse. Uh, if you guys follow my Instagram stories, you will have seen a couple um, like videos and pictures from uh, the park. Oh my gosh. Riverside Park in lacrosse is just unbelievably gorgeous. Um, really beautiful walking paths along the river, um, fountains and statues and big green spaces where you can play frisbee. Um, there's a big band shell and a, a theater. Um, a stage where they do productions and concerts throughout the summer and um, benches all along the river so you can sit and yeah we took we went to the farmer's market first Friday night then we went and got um, pizza at this amazing pizza place called um, Kate's Pizza Amore 
downtown lacrosse so good and then we walked down to riverside park we sat on a bench and watched the sun go down and watched all the boats on the river and the ducks fly it was just it was such a perfect night and then we went to a coffee shop slash bar it's not really a bar but they serve like hard cider and beers and um a few like mixed drinks uh called the root note and they do music Friday nights, Saturday nights, I think Sunday nights too, they do music, live music all the time. And um, we had a couple hard ciders and listened to some music and it was fabulous. So yeah, so that was my Friday night. Needless to say, I did not do any knitting that night. Um, and then, yeah, Thursday night I worked late. Wednesday I went to see Wonder Woman with my friend Amanda, which was fabulous. Go see it. She's fantastic. Oh my gosh. So wonderful. I'm still like, I still think about that movie. You can tell it's a good movie when you're still thinking about the characters and what's happened and, you know, all that, like days later. I want to see it again so badly. Yeah. That's my recommendation. So Wednesday night I didn't do any knitting. Thursday night I didn't. Friday night I didn't. Uh, so last night was my first real night to sit down and knit, and what I was knitting on, I cannot show you. <laughs> it's a new pattern that I'm going to be releasing at the end of June, and it coordinates with um, the specialty yarn that's being dyed for Yarnology, which is the yarn store that I work at, if, if someone's watching for the first time. Um, we have a special colorway dyed for us. Um, Summers, we do like two a year. So last year we did um, a summer colorway and a winter colorway. This year I, I'm pretty sure we're going to do the same thing. Um, we definitely have our summer colorway coming out uh, June 23rd, which is a Friday. Um, and there are limited quantities. We have three bases, I believe. Um, four. No, three. Two fingering weight bases and a worsted weight, I think. Um, and that's being dyed for us by Lisa of Three Sisters Fiber Company. So it's really fun to collaborate with her. And then, lucky me, I get to take a skein home. Um, well, I've already taken a skein home, and I am designing a pattern to go with it. So I was working on that last night and this morning, um, just trying to get it knit so that we can have it on display on the 23rd when it comes out. And... Yeah, I have to get it knit first so that I can write up the pattern, take pictures, put it all together, get it edited. Yeah, so I really have to get that done because I only have like a week and a half left or something like that. Um, so yeah, that's really all the knitting I've been doing. I did a little bit of knitting on my Find Your Fade, but that is um, in Winona at the yarn shop right now because I just kind of left it there. It's the project I'm knitting on um, at work if I have a little bit of downtime. And it's coming along. I'm not too much further than I was the last time I showed it. Um, I am done combining colors C and D, and now I'm just on the garter stitch part of color D, uh, which was my spun right round color. And you can look back at some of the previous episodes to see uh, that project. I've been showing it for quite a few weeks because I'll just get like a tiny little bit done and just show you what you know the transitions look like or whatever. But so I'm excited about that. Um, otherwise, I did do a little bit more knitting on um, the sock that I'm working on. And I showed you guys this last week, or last time I podcasted. But this is a, oh, the lighting. Oh, there we go. I just have to pick up that natural light. Um, this is a mistake rib sock that I'm doing toe up on my Addy Sock Rocket 40 inch needles, um, US size one. And I, this is the second one. The first one I knit last year, um, actually about this time, a little later, I started it in August and finished it in like September or something. Um, and it took me this long to knit the second one. <laughs> so yeah, they're super long, but they're gonna be awesome for being outside in the winter time. Um, and this is the project that I'm knitting on when I'm at the farm with Seaver. Um, if I'm riding in the tractor or um, 
mostly riding in the tractor. I'm trying to think of another circum or instance when we would um, I'd be knitting and um, on the go or something. But it's also a really great car project. If I'm uh, you know going to be in the car and not driving, then um, I would knit on this. I haven't had an opportunity to do that lately, but yeah, so it's coming along. The Progress Keeper, I think, is where I was the last time I podcasted. And last week I went to the farm again, and we did a little bit more um, cutting of hay. And so I was riding along in the tractor and got a little bit more done. So slowly but surely, it'll it'll come together. And that Progress Keeper right there, I don't know if it's focusing, maybe, um, that is from the Gnome Knitter, and that's a little pumpkin spice scone. I was showing my coworker Connor. Connor just graduated from high school. Oh my gosh. Connor started working at the yarn shop when he was 15 um, and is now 18 and heading off to college. And it makes me feel so old because I feel like I've watched him grow up. Um, he came, he started coming and knitting at the yarn shop when he was like 12 or 13. So he'd come in for a couple, he was coming in for a couple years um, and getting advice and just hanging out with us uh, for a couple years until he started working. And then, um, yeah, now he's going off to college. He kind of feels like my little brother. Ah, I can't believe he's that old. Um, yeah, but I was showing, anyway, <laughs> I was showing Connor yesterday um, some of the progress keepers from Sucre Sucre Miniatures and from the Gnome Knitter and he had never seen like the the miniature food progress keepers. He was like, what is this? This is incredible. I'm like, I know. I'm kind of obsessed. Um, yeah, I have one for like every project I'm working on. Yeah, so that's really my only work in progress besides my fade, which I just told you about, and my super secret project. I did post like a teaser about that um, last night on my Instagram. I had to put the picture in black and white so that you can't see the colors because that's a secret too. The yarn's a secret, the pattern's a secret, so you can kind of tell maybe what the project is going to be. You can probably tell, but yeah, the rest of it's a secret, so that's really exciting. Um, I haven't even really been working on my brewer's cowl. I just kind of updated my um, calendar of when, of their wins and losses over the last couple weeks, and because I haven't done any of it in June yet, I haven't I haven't recorded any of their games. Um, for those of you who haven't watched before, um, I am knitting a striped cowl based on wins and losses of the Milwaukee Brewers, which is my favorite 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 baseball team, and. Um, yeah, so it's nice because I'm only doing like three rows per game, so it doesn't take too long to knit, but I'm afraid I really don't want to get too far behind. I'm about two weeks, maybe a little more than two weeks behind right now, and yeah, I mean, it could really add up quickly if I, yeah, if I, if I don't get started on that again. So once this project for the yarn shop is done... Um, I'm going to kind of go back and start finishing up other works in progress, or at least catching up on works in progress uh, from before. So, yeah. Um, let's see, what else do I have to talk about? Oh, yeah. About a month or so ago, I was talking to you guys about my um, a project that I had done that I was entering into a contest. And it was, it's a contest that's, how shall I describe this? So this contest is to celebrate the 150th birthday of Laura Ingalls Wilder. And she is an author, an American author, who wrote a lot about, she wrote children's books about her life growing up um, on the American frontier. And she was born in the 1860s and grew up kind of traveling in a covered wagon from place to place with her family. They went down to Kansas. Well, yeah, they went down to Kansas. It was like Missouri, Kansas line. It's kind of iffy as to where they actually were and now where the border was, but it was Kansas territory at that point, not a state yet. 
and um, they built a cabin there and tried to farm, but then they got kicked, well, they had to move because they were actually on Native American property, which they weren't aware of, or they were aware of, and they sort of didn't care, but anyway, they got, they had to move off of that because they were encroaching on the Natives' territory um, at that time, and then they had, they went back to Wisconsin, and then they moved from Wisconsin to Minnesota, and then from Minnesota they moved down to Iowa, and then from Iowa they moved back to Minnesota, and then from Minnesota they moved to South Dakota, and they just, like, just trying to make life work. I mean, with, um, there were opportunities of free land and, you know, all this stuff that her father just couldn't pass up, and he tried to farm and that didn't work and then he opened a store and then that was a little more profitable and yeah so they traveled around um, the Midwestern frontier for most of her life um, ended up in uh, Dismet, South Dakota and then she moved from South Dakota down to Missouri with her husband and then lived there for pretty much the rest of her life I think they moved out to California for a bit because of her husband's health but then they moved back of quickly after that. I don't think they liked California very well. Anyway, that's totally beside the point, but um, I have loved her books since I was, since I read them for the first time in third grade when I was, what, like eight? Yeah, eight years old, and have done research, no, well, not research, but I've read a lot of her biographies. I've um, read history, you know, accounts of her family history, and I've read her books multiple, many multiple times, um, and just love anything associated with Laura Ingalls Wilder. So I wanted to enter this contest that's being put on by the Wisconsin State Historical Society, and I wanted to use my art medium, which of course is yarn and knitting and wool, and yeah, so. I designed and knit this piece, which I have showed before on the podcast, but this is a um, cape, a capelet, because it doesn't go all the way down. It's not too long. It goes down to like um, mid-length on your arms, if your arms are lying flat at your side. And it has a tree motif, which represents um, the big woods of Wisconsin, which is where she was born. It's got a hood on the back of it and yeah so I yeah I knit I designed and knit that and entered it and I just found out a couple weeks ago that I'm a finalist I actually found out the day after I recorded the last podcast and so that's why I didn't mention it in the last podcast I um, got an email saying that I'm one of 12 finalists and I'm invited to um, this big event that they're having down there, and at the event they're going to announce the winners. So um, I'm really, really excited. I'm really excited. I don't know, like, who else or what projects anyone else has entered, so I can't really even make a, a clear judgment as to how good my chances are, but I think it's just cool that I got chosen as a finalist. And um, there's two of the two of the people who are going to be uh, judging the projects. One is an illustrator who has done a lot of um, children's books. She's a beautiful illustrator. I forget her name. But she actually did the American Girl um, Kirsten books, who Kirsten was my favorite American girl. I had her. She was the pioneer. Can you, can you sense a trend here? Um, kind of obsessed with, like, like pioneers and the western expansion even though it's like I have this love-hate relationship with this part of American history because I'm appalled by a lot of what happened at that point I think that we treated the natives horrifically I can't even it was just awful um, I think that with expanding westward, we did a toll on the earth. The mining and the, the building and the, I mean, it was just awful. 
looking back at it now, it's like, I can't believe that people were ever allowed to do that. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I have this fascination with the families and the people who packed everything up into a 10 foot by 4 foot covered wagon and took their, you know, I mean, risked their lives and moved across the country in the search for a better, better life. Um, yeah, so I'm, I have, yeah, love, hate, love, hate relationship. Um, but anyway, Kirsten was my favorite American girl. She was a Swedish girl who immigrated to Minnesota and I just loved, I loved the aesthetic of those books, the, the traditional Swedish motifs and the, um, American pioneer spirit and So anyway, the illustrator of those books is going to be one of the judges. And I'm like... Fangirling a little bit. Um, the other One of the other judges is an author who has written um, a lot of biographies on Laura. He's going to be one of the authors. Or he's going to be one of the judges, so that's really cool. And yeah, I'm just really excited that... I get to go and that my project was chosen so kind of proud proud moment um, and this really segues nicely into um, the last thing I really wanted to talk about which is a beautiful new addition to my stash <laughs> and this I okay I have so much yarn I don't want to be buying any more yarn but then Tiffany of the Woolen Homestead tagged me on Instagram um, this dyer was making sets of yarn based on the books, the book covers of Laura Ingalls Wilder books. That's really redundant. Anyway, um, so this is on the banks of Plum Creek. This is the, it's technically the third book in Laura's history. Um, it's the fourth, it's considered like the fourth book in the set because Farmer Boy is snuck in there and that's about her husband growing up. But technically Farmer Boy came about, yeah, anyway, I won't get into details about when the books were actually published, but okay, so this is On the Banks of Plum Creek and this is a narration of her time in um, Plum Creek, Minnesota. Yeah, what town is that in? Oh my gosh. The town. Where's the town? Okay, so I can't actually remember the name of the town where Plum Creek is. And it's going to bother me so badly. Um, I'll look it up after I'm done recording. Because um, I just took about four minutes paging through to try and find the name of the town. Um... I've been there, so I don't know why it's blank. I'm blanking on it. Anyway, this is, they lived in like the western part of Minnesota, and I, I really love this book. So on Instagram, um, yeah, Tiffany tagged me, and I saw these sets that Stitch This Fiber Arts was doing. And they were based off, like I said, based off the colors of the covers of the books. And I could not resist. I could not resist. I was going between two of them. I'm still actually thinking about the other one. Um, and I was at the farm when I saw these. Um, and I was adv admiring them. And then the next day she posted that. Uh, the sets were live, and I didn't know how fast they were going to go, and it was kind of an impulse, and I just clicked buy, put my card number in, and bought it. <laughs> I bought, well, you can probably tell, I bought the one that goes with On the Banks of Plum Creek. I love this blue. I think this blue is just beautiful, and... The lighting's really bad here, so you probably can't see this one very well. Um, this is the more variegated one, um, 
kind of speckly and it has a lot of I was kind of digging through the skein just to see what was on the inside oh and look there's a little I forgot to show that she included a little progress keeper and this is uh, Deanna I think is her name yes Deanna and she is in Pennsylvania and yeah but look at look at these speckles Sorry about the light again. But blues and greens and this mauve color and a little bit of orange. And I am really having fun looking at the cover and seeing what um, she has taken from the cover and used as inspiration. So the, the piece of clothing that Ma down there is ironing, I think, is the orangey color that she picked up. Um, you got a little bit of purple from Ma's shirt there, the blue obviously from Laura's dress and from the, um, the border, and then the flowers are purple and blue and a little bit of this reddish orangey color, green obviously for the grass, and then the background is just this, um, I know you probably can't discern that very well, but um, just this kind of yellowy off-white so you can kind of see where you get some of the lighting on that you can kind of see where she picked up a lot of those colors from so yeah I my I think this was probably my first choice because I love the book so much too um, and then I love obviously love the colors but my second choice was the long winter set um, that one was beautiful too. The the solid color was this beautiful purple, um, and then the the variegated was very um, I don't know, just very light and just beautiful. Um, and there's still one available in her shop on Etsy, and I'm so tempted because I don't know if she's ever gonna do these again. Um, she didn't say on on Instagram whether or not it's a one and done, but all the other sets are gone, so the only sets on our Etsy shop right now are The Little House in the Big Woods, which is the first book, and then um, The Long Winter, and which is later on when they're already in South Dakota. So, I'm like, but I'm, I'm so happy that I got this one. I'm just so happy. I love it so much. Um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a two-color shawl of some sort. Um, and do maybe the main color as the speckly one, and then this one as the, like, pop. Um, I don't know. I don't know what pattern I'm going to do, or if I'm going to make up my own pattern. Who knows? <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm just really happy that I got these. And she also included a little mini skein, which I love. That's going to go in my cozy memory blanket. And a few, what are these? I think these are car caramels. Yeah, Lancaster caramels. Which, yeah, sweets are always, always a winner in my book. So yeah, my mind has been filled with Laura Ingalls Wilder lately. And I'm so grateful to Tiffany for tagging me in that. I never would have seen it. I don't, I didn't follow Stitch This Fiber Arts, or Swatch, excuse me, Swatch This Fiber Arts um, before this. And I'm definitely following her now because she also has some Jane Austen sets and um, a couple other uh, colorways that are um, based on books and um, authors and classics. And yeah, it's totally up my alley. So I'm so excited. And that came, I think, on Friday. That just came. So yeah, very excited. So, I think that's about it. Um, the sun is starting to go away. As you can probably tell by the lighting getting darker and darker. I will try and fix that um, in the editing process. It's only like 11.30, but there are some clouds moving in. And I wonder if it's going to rain today. I don't know. Um... I am heading to the farm this afternoon after work, and I'll be there today and tomorrow, 
and then next week I work um, pretty much all week. So I'll be there Tuesday through, well, it, I might only be there Tuesday through Saturday now. But yes. Anyway, I hope you all had a lovely week and I hope you all are having a very lovely weekend. Um, yesterday was Worldwide Knit in Public Day, so hopefully you did something fun for that. I was, I was at work, of course, so I did technically knit in public. I knit at the yarn shop, and we, um, had some people out sitting in front. It was a little too windy and too hot, uh, towards midday for them to stay outside, but they were out there for a good hour or so, um, until about 11, 11.30, and then, uh, they came in and sat and knit inside for... Uh, the rest of the time so so that was fun I got to see some fun people and knit with them and yeah we had a really good day at the yarn shop so thank you so much for coming and watching this week I appreciate each and every one of you whether this is your first time watching or you've been coming back every week thank you so much um, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up that just helps get my podcast and my name out there um, for other people to see. So I hope you guys come back next time. Thanks again, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye!